Okay, let's take a look at how to correctly read the ID. So, first off, we need to open up the gate. We'll identify where the loop is, and we will take our length of rope. And the important thing to remember is simply find the loop on your line and line that up with the out position or the loop on the ID. Once you do that, you cannot go wrong. It really does not matter how you're utilizing the ID. The loop is always going to line up with the loop on the ID. So once I've attached my rope, it doesn't matter whether this carabiner now gets attached to um, the rescuer, for example, and the loop gets attached to an anchor point, anchor point, or if the ID itself gets attached to an anchor point and the loop gets attached to the rescuer. It doesn't matter, it's still the same loop, still the same figure eight on a bite, whether the figure eight on the bite goes to the rescuer or whether it goes to the anchor point, it doesn't change how we reeve the ID. So rigging the ID for the purpose of a lowering system, again, I'm gonna find the loop sure that I've rigged it correctly. And then when I look at my, my ID, what I'm going to notice is that the line going to the load actually feeds out from the side of the device. So from across the room, across from 100 yards away, I can tell if this has been reeved properly if it comes out the side of the device. If I see that the rope is coming out of the top of the device, and that's going to the anchor point, from 700 yards away I can tell that this has been rigged incorrectly. Good information for a safety officer, an STI, or an RSO. So, I have ensured that this we're using it for a learning system, so it's coming out of the side of the device and it matches, therefore, the diagram on the outside. I'm going to attach this to my anchor point and then I can take my load end and pass that to my um, patient, to my rescuer, to whomever it is that is being lowered down. Can I get you to apply tension on that for me, please? Okay, so once it is under tension, the device becomes very easy to operate. She's problematic when she's not under tension. This sweet spot for the downside of the handle becomes very problematic. All I'm going to do is I'm going to take my standing end, or my running end, and I'm going to keep an eye on the working end. As we know in our lifelines, they all have traces in them, so I can see how many inches per second my lifeline is traveling. And we're going to say ready on down, down slow. And we're just going to feed her on and down. And really operating the ID for descent is as simple as that. If I pull too quickly or too hard on the handle, it will self-lock. I'm going to bring the handle forward and I'm going to listen for the click. Once I hear the click, I can now come back down, open up the cam again by opening up the handle and again we are in the down position. If we're going to leave a rescuer suspended, I can just let go of everything, close the handle or close the curve into the lock position. Don't push it all the way over into the store and then we can tie off where the line comes in. We can either tie off a good solid knot in there or we can take a secondary carabiner and attach it or if you want you can tie a couple of overhand hitches onto the working end of the line itself. Either three options will work. Okay, we're going to have a look at the function of belay. Belay being a redundant safety as opposed to a lowering system. In a true belay system, the belay device, the belay line, is never actually subjected to a load. 
except in the event of an unforeseen emergency or an unforeseen system failure. So when we run a belay, the important thing is I now need to maintain control of the device. And I want this angle here between the working end and the device itself to be approximately 90 degrees or less, down to maybe a 70 degrees. But it's very important I keep this perpendicular. If I don't, and I allow this angle to close up, then I'm going to get greater amounts of friction and the idea is not going to work as you should. The other important thing is that your, your running end of the line can feed in freely. One of the common causes for problems with um, utilizing the ID for belay is people place the bag behind them or at a point where the running end has resistance. They should, the working end will be nice and taut and the running end should be loose, should be feeding in freely. Ready on down and down mm -hmm. slow. So just by maintaining that angle and feeding in my line, she's going to feed out nice and easily. You'd be amazed at how much speed you can get on this, probably more than you'd like. You should probably travel at up to a foot a second if you really wanted. And that's all there is to it. Should the main line fail, you simply, it's going to snap out of your hand or release it just like you would on a Prusix. And at that point, we are now into a lowering system. Should the ID just lock up itself without a critical failure, the first thing you're going to do is call stop, stop, loudly. Once you call stop, stop, that will be echoed by either the RSO or the safety officer or whomever. You need the system to come to a complete stop. At that point, whether it's the person is repelling, they're going to stop doing what they're doing. They're going to lock off and you're going to allow it to feed out and you're going to create some slack on the uh, working end of the line. That's going to allow me to put the device back in the perpendicular position. And at that point, you can call ready on down, down slow, and proceed. Go ahead. Just like that. Stop, stop. I just locked it up myself there. One of the things I noticed was that the handle was starting to close a little bit. And it was starting to close the cam a little bit. So I do want to ensure that the handle is in the belay position is straight in line with the device as it's marked on the back okay so you want to keep that handle in that open belay position ready on down down slow just like that 